In mathematics, a group is a set equipped with a binary operation which combines any two elements to form a third element in such a way that four conditions called group axioms are satisfied, namely closure, associativity, identity and invertibility. One of the most familiar examples of a group is the set of integers together with the addition operation, but groups are encountered in numerous areas within and outside mathematics, and help focusing on essential structural aspects. By detaching them from the concrete nature of the subject of the study, groups share a fundamental kinship with the notion of symmetry. For example, a symmetry group encodes symmetry features of a geometrical object. The group consists of the set of transformations that leave the object unchanged and the operation of combining two such transformations by performing one after the other. Lie groups are the symmetry groups used in the standard model of particle physics. Poincare groups, which are also Lie groups, can express the physical symmetry underlying special relativity, and point groups are used to help understand symmetry phenomena in molecular chemistry. The concept of a group arose from the study of polynomial equations, starting with Everest Galois in the 1830s. After contributions from other fields such as number theory and geometry, the group notion was generalized and firmly established around 1870. Modern group theory—an active mathematical discipline—studies groups in their own right. To explore groups, mathematicians have devised various notions to break groups into smaller, better understandable pieces, such as subgroups, quotient groups and simple groups. In addition to their abstract properties, group theorists also study the different ways in which a group can be expressed concretely, both from a point of view of representation theory that is, through the representations of the group and of computational group theory. A theory has been developed for finite groups, which culminated with the classification of finite simple groups, completed in 2004. Since the mid-1980s, geometric group theory, which studies finitely generated groups as geometric objects, has become an active area in group theory. Topic. Definition and illustration Topic. First example, the integers One of the most familiar groups is the set of integers Z Z which consists of the numbers minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 Together with addition, the following properties of integer addition serve as a model for the group axioms given in the definition below. For any two integers a and b, the sum a plus b is also an integer. That is, addition of integers always yields an integer. This property is known as closure under addition. For all integers a, b and c, a plus b plus c equals a plus b plus c. Expressed in words, adding a to b first, and then adding the result to c gives the same final result as adding a to the sum of b and c, a property known as associativity. If a is any integer, then 0 plus a. Topic. A plus 0 A. 0 is called the identity element of addition because adding it to any integer returns the same integer. For every integer a, there is an integer b such that a plus b. Topic b plus a zero. The integer b is called the inverse element of the integer a and is denoted minus a. The integers, together with the operation plus, form a mathematical object belonging to a broad class sharing similar structural aspects. To appropriately understand these structures as a collective, the following definition is developed. Topic. Definition A group is a set, G, together with an operation, called the group law of G, that combines any two elements A and B to form another element, denoted AB or AB. To qualify as a group, the set and operation, G, must satisfy four requirements known as the group axioms Closure For all A, B and G, the result of the operation, A, B, is also in G Associativity For all A, B and C in G, A, B, C equals A, B, C Identity element 
there exists an element E in G such that, for every element of in G, the equation E A. Topic A E A holds. Such an element is unique, see below, and thus one speaks of the identity element. Inverse element For each A in G, there exists an element B in G, commonly denoted a minus one or minus A, if the operation is denoted plus such that A B Topic B A E, where E is the identity element, the result of an operation may depend on the order of the operands. In other words, the result of combining element A with element B need not yield the same result as combining element B with element A. The equation A B Topic B A may not always be true. This equation always holds in the group of integers under addition, because A plus B B plus A for any two integers commutativity of addition. Groups for which the commutativity equation AB equals BA always holds are called abelian groups in honor of Niels Henrik Abel. The symmetry group described in the following section is an example of a group that is not abelian. The identity element of a group G is often written as 1 or 1G, a notation inherited from the multiplicative identity. If a group is abelian, then one may choose to denote the group operation by plus and the identity element by zero, in that case, the group is called an additive group. The identity element can also be written as id. The set G is called the underlying set of the group G. Often the group's underlying set G is used as a short name for the group G. Along the same lines, shorthand expressions such as a subset of the group G or an element of group G are used when what is actually meant is a subset of the underlying set G of the group G or an element of the underlying set G of the group G usually it is clear from the context whether a symbol like G refers to a group or to an underlying set an alternate but equivalent definition is to expand the structure of a group to define a group as a set equipped with three operations satisfying the same axioms as above with the there exists Part removed in the two last axioms, these operations being the group law, as above, which is a binary operation, the inverse operation, which is a unary operation and maps are to a minus one, display style a caret minus one, and the identity element, which is viewed as a zero ary operation. As this formulation of the definition avoids existential quantifiers, it is generally preferred for computing with groups and for computer-aided proofs. This formulation exhibits groups as a variety of universal algebra. It is also useful for talking of properties of the inverse operation, as needed for defining topological groups and group objects. Topic. Second example, a symmetry group. Two figures in the plane are congruent if one can be changed into the other using a combination of rotations, reflections, and translations. Any figure is congruent to itself. However, some figures are congruent to themselves in more than one way, and these extra congruences are called symmetries. A square has eight symmetries. These are the identity operation leaving everything unchanged, denoted id, Rotations of the square around its center by 90 degrees clockwise, 180 degrees clockwise, and 270 degrees clockwise, denoted by R1, R2 and R3, respectively. Reflections about the vertical and horizontal middle line FH and FV, or through the two diagonals FD and FC. These symmetries are represented by functions. Each of these functions sends a point in the square to the corresponding point under the symmetry. For example, R1 sends a point to its rotation 90 degrees clockwise around the square's center, and FH sends a point to its reflection across the square's vertical middle line. Composing two of these symmetry functions gives another symmetry function. These symmetries determine a group called the dihedral group of degree 4 and denoted D4. The underlying set of the group is the above set of symmetry functions, and the group operation is function composition. 
Two symmetries are combined by composing them as functions, that is, applying the first one to the square, and the second one to the result of the first application. The result of performing first A and then B is written symbolically from right to left as B A. Apply the symmetry B after performing the symmetry A. The right to left notation is the same notation that is used for composition of functions. The group table on the right lists the results of all such compositions possible. For example, rotating by 270 degrees clockwise R3 and then reflecting horizontally FH is the same as performing a reflection along the diagonal FD. Using the above symbols, highlighted in blue in the group table, FHR3 equals FD. Given this set of symmetries and the described operation, the group axioms can be understood as follows In contrast to the group of integers above, where the order of the operation is irrelevant, it does matter in D4, FHR1. FC but R1 FH FD. In other words, D4 is not abelian, which makes the group structure more difficult than the integers introduced first. Topic: History. The modern concept of an abstract group developed out of several fields of mathematics. The original motivation for group theory was the quest for solutions of polynomial equations of degree higher than 4. The 19th-century French mathematician Évariste Galois, extending prior work of Paolo Ruffini and Joseph Louis Lagrange, gave a criterion for the solvability of a particular polynomial equation in terms of the symmetry group of its roots solutions. The elements of such a Galois group correspond to certain permutations of the roots. At first, Galois' ideas were rejected by his contemporaries, and published only posthumously. More general permutation groups were investigated in particular by Augustin Louis Cauchy. Arthur Cayley's on the theory of groups, as depending on the symbolic equation θ n. 1 1854, gives the first abstract definition of a finite group. Geometry was a second field in which groups were used systematically, especially symmetry groups as part of Felix Klein's 1872 Erlangen program. After novel geometries such as hyperbolic and projective geometry had emerged, Klein used group theory to organize them in a more coherent way. Further advancing these ideas, Sophus Lie founded the study of Lie groups in 1884. The third field contributing to group theory was number theory. Certain abelian group structures had been used implicitly in Carl Friedrich Gauss' number theoretical work Disquisition Arithmetic, and more explicitly by Leopold Kronecker. In 1847, Ernst Kummer made early attempts to prove Fermat's last theorem by developing groups describing factorization into prime numbers. The convergence of these various sources into a uniform theory of groups started with Camille Jordan's trait des substitutions et des equations algebraiques. 1870. Walter von Dyck introduced the idea of specifying a group by means of generators and relations, and was also the first to give an axiomatic definition of an abstract group in the terminology of the time. As of the 20th century, groups gained wide recognition by the pioneering work of Ferdinand Georg Frobenius and William Burnside, who worked on representation theory of finite groups, Richard Brouwer's modular representation theory and Issai Scher's papers. The theory of Lie groups, and more generally locally compact groups was studied by Hermann Weyl, Ely Carton and many others. Its algebraic counterpart, the theory of algebraic groups, was first shaped by Claude Chevalier from the late 1930s and later by the work of Armand Borel and Jacques Titz. The University of Chicago's 1960–61 Group Theory Year brought together group theorists such as Daniel Gorenstein, John G. Thompson, and Walter Fay, laying the foundation of a collaboration that, with input from numerous other mathematicians, led to the classification of finite simple groups. With the final step taken by Askbarker and Smith in 2004. This project exceeded previous mathematical endeavors by its sheer size, in both length of proof and number of researchers. Research is ongoing to simplify the proof of this classification. These days, group theory is still a highly active mathematical branch, impacting many other fields. Elementary consequences of the group axioms 
equals basic facts about all groups that can be obtained directly from the group axioms are commonly subsumed under elementary group theory. For example, repeated applications of the associativity axiom show that the unambiguity of A B C topic A B C A B C generalizes to more than 3 factors because this implies that parentheses can be inserted anywhere within such a series of terms, parentheses are usually omitted, the axioms may be weakened to assert only the existence of a left identity and left inverses. Both can be shown to be actually two-sided, so the resulting definition is equivalent to the one given above. <laughs> Uniqueness of identity element and inverses Two important consequences of the group axioms are the uniqueness of the identity element and the uniqueness of inverse elements. There can be only one identity element in a group, and each element in a group has exactly one inverse element. Thus, it is customary to speak of the identity, and the inverse of an element, to prove the uniqueness of an inverse element of A. Suppose that A has two inverses, denoted B and C, in a group G. Then, the term B on the first line above and the C on the last are equal, since they are connected by a chain of equalities. In other words, there is only one inverse element of A. Similarly, to prove that the identity element of a group is unique, assume G is a group with two identity elements E and F. Then E E F F, hence E and F are equal. Topic. Division In groups, the existence of inverse elements implies that division is possible. Given elements A and B of the group G, there is exactly one solution x in G to the equation x A equals B, namely B A minus 1. In fact, we have B A minus 1 A. Topic. B A minus 1 A. B E Topic B uniqueness results by multiplying the two sides of the equation x A B by a minus one. The element B A minus one, often denoted B, A, is called the right quotient of B by A, or the result of the right division of B by A. Similarly there is exactly one solution y in G to the equation A y. B, namely y a minus 1 b. This solution is the left quotient of b by a, and is sometimes denoted a b. In general b, a and a b may be different, but, if the group operation is commutative that is, if the group is abelian, they are equal. In this case, the group operation is often denoted as an addition, and one talks of subtraction and difference instead of division and quotient. A consequence of this is that multiplication by a group element G is a bijection. Specifically, if G is an element of the group G, the function mathematics from G to itself that maps H element of G to G H is a bijection. This function is called the left translation by G. Similarly, the right translation by G is the bijection from G to itself, that maps H to HG. If G is abelian, the left and the right translation by a group element are the same. Topic: Basic concepts. To understand groups beyond the level of mere symbolic manipulations as above, more structural concepts have to be employed. There is a conceptual principle underlying all of the following notions to take advantage of the structure offered by groups, which sets being structureless do not have constructions related to groups have to be compatible with the group operation. This compatibility manifests itself in the following notions in various ways. For example, groups can be related to each other via functions called group homomorphisms. By the mentioned principle, they are required to respect the group structures in a precise sense. 
The structure of groups can also be understood by breaking them into pieces called subgroups and quotient groups. The principle of «preserving structures» a recurring topic in mathematics throughout is an instance of working in a category, in this case the category of groups. Topic: <laughs> Group homomorphisms. Group homomorphisms are functions that preserve group structure. A function a g h between two groups g and h is called a homomorphism if the equation a g k equals a g a k holds for all elements g k and g. In other words, the result is the same when performing the group operation after or before applying the map a. This requirement ensures that at 1 g equals 1 h, and also 8 g minus 1 equals 8 g minus 1, for all g and g thus a group homomorphism respects all the structure of g provided by the group axioms, two groups g and h are called isomorphic if there exist group homomorphisms a, g h and b, h g, such that applying the two functions one after another in each of the two possible orders gives the identity functions of g and h. That is, a b h equals h and b a g equals g for any g in g and h in h from an abstract point of view isomorphic groups carry the same information for example proving that g g equals 1 g for some element g of g is equivalent to proving that a g a g equals 1 h because applying a to the first equality yields the second and applying b to the second gives back the first equals topic subgroups Equals. Informally, a subgroup is a group H contained within a bigger one, G. Concretely, the identity element of G is contained in H, and whenever H1 and H2 are in H, then so are H1, H2, and H1 minus 1, so the elements of H, equipped with the group operation on G restricted to H, indeed form a group. In the example above, the identity and the rotations constitute a subgroup R. Topic. id R1, R2, R3, highlighted in red in the group table above, any two rotations composed are still a rotation, and a rotation can be undone by i.e., is inverse to, the complementary rotations 270 degrees for 90 degrees, 180 degrees for 180 degrees, and 90 degrees for 270 degrees note that rotation in the opposite direction is not defined. The subgroup test is a necessary and sufficient condition for a non-empty subset H of a group G to be a subgroup. It is sufficient to check that G minus one H element of H for all elements G H element of H. Knowing the subgroups is important in understanding the group as a whole. Given any subset S of a group G, the subgroup generated by S consists of products of elements of S and their inverses. It is the smallest subgroup of G containing S in the introductory example above. The subgroup generated by I2 and FV consists of these two elements, the identity element ID and FH. FVR2. Again, this is a subgroup, because combining any two of these four elements or their inverses, which are, in this particular case, these same elements, yields an element of this subgroup. Topic: Cosets. In many situations, it is desirable to consider two group elements the same if they differ by an element of a given subgroup. For example, in D4 above, once a reflection is performed, the square never gets back to the R2 configuration by just applying the rotation operations and no further reflections, i.e., the rotation operations are irrelevant to the question whether a reflection has been performed. Cosets are used to formalize this insight. A subgroup H defines left and right cosets, which can be thought of as translations of H by arbitrary group elements G. In symbolic terms, the left and right cosets of H containing G are G H. Topic G H H element of H and H G. 
H, G, H element of H, respectively, the left cosets of any subgroup H form a partition of G, that is, the union of all left cosets is equal to G and two left cosets are either equal or have an empty intersection. The first case G1H G2H happens precisely when G1 minus 1 G2 element of H, i.e., if the two elements differ by an element of H, similar considerations apply to the right cosets of H. The left and right cosets of H may or may not be equal. If they are, i.e., for all G and G, GH. HG, then H is said to be a normal subgroup. In D4, the introductory symmetry group, the left cosets G R of the subgroup R consisting of the rotations are either equal to R, if G is an element of R itself, or otherwise equal to U. <laughs> FCR FC, FV, FD, FH highlighted in green. The subgroup R is also normal, because FCR Topic U RFC and similarly for any element other than FC. In fact, in the case of D4, observe that all such cosets are equal, such that FHR. Topic FVR FDR equals FCR equals Topic Quotient groups equals In some situations the set of cosets of a subgroup can be endowed with a group law, giving a quotient group or factor group. For this to be possible, the subgroup has to be normal. Given any normal subgroup N, the quotient group is defined by G N topic G n G element of G G modulo n. This set inherits a group operation, sometimes called Cauchy multiplication or Cauchy addition, from the original group G G n H n. G H n for all G and H in G. This definition is motivated by the idea, itself an instance of general structural considerations outlined above, that the map G G n that associates to any element G its cosa G n be a group homomorphism, or by general abstract considerations called universal properties. The cosa n. Topic n serves as the identity in this group, and the inverse of g n in the quotient group is g n minus one. G minus one n. The elements of the quotient group D four R R R itself, which represents the identity, and U equals F V R. The group operation on the quotient is shown at the right. For example, U U equals F V R F V R. Topic FVFV R R both the subgroup R equals id R one R two R three as well as the corresponding quotient of abelian, whereas D four is not abelian. Building bigger groups by smaller ones, such as D four from its subgroup R and the quotient D four R is abstracted by a notion called semi-direct product. Quotient groups and subgroups together form a way of describing every group by its presentation. Any group is the quotient of the free group over the generators of the group, quotiented by the subgroup of relations. The dihedral group D4, for example, can be generated by two elements R and F, for example, R. Topic R1, the right rotation, and F. FV the vertical or any other reflection which means that every symmetry of the square is a finite composition of these two symmetries or their inverses together with the relations R4 topic F2 RF2 equals 1 the group is completely described 
A presentation of a group can also be used to construct the Cayley graph, a device used to graphically capture discrete groups. Sub and quotient groups are related in the following way a subset H of G can be seen as an injective map HG, i.e., any element of the target has at most one element that maps to it. The counterpart to injective maps are surjective maps every element of the target is mapped onto, such as the canonical map G, G, N. Interpreting subgroup and quotients in light of these homomorphisms emphasizes the structural concept inherent to these definitions alluded to in the introduction. In general, homomorphisms are neither injective nor surjective. Kernel and image of group homomorphisms and the first isomorphism theorem address this phenomenon. Examples and applications Examples and applications of groups abound. A starting point is the group set of integers with addition as group operation, introduced above. If instead of addition multiplication is considered, one obtains multiplicative groups. These groups are predecessors of important constructions in abstract algebra. Groups are also applied in many other mathematical areas. Mathematical objects are often examined by associating groups to them and studying the properties of the corresponding groups. For example, Henry Poincaré founded what is now called algebraic topology by introducing the fundamental group. By means of this connection, topological properties such as proximity and continuity translate into properties of groups. For example, elements of the fundamental group are represented by loops. The second image at the right shows some loops in a plane minus a point. The blue loop is considered null homotopic and thus irrelevant, because it can be continuously shrunk to a point. The presence of the whole prevents the orange loop from being shrunk to a point. The fundamental group of the plane with a point deleted turns out to be infinite cyclic, generated by the orange loop or any other loop winding once around the hole. This way, the fundamental group detects the hole. In more recent applications, the influence has also been reversed to motivate geometric constructions by a group theoretical background. In a similar vein, geometric group theory employs geometric concepts, for example in the study of hyperbolic groups. Further branches crucially applying groups include algebraic geometry and number theory. In addition to the above theoretical applications, many practical applications of groups exist. Cryptography relies on the combination of the abstract group theory approach together with algorithmical knowledge obtained in computational group theory, in particular when implemented for finite groups. Applications of group theory are not restricted to mathematics, sciences such as physics, chemistry and computer science benefit from the concept. Numbers Many number systems, such as the integers and the rationals enjoy a naturally given group structure. In some cases, such as with the rationals, both addition and multiplication operations give rise to group structures. Such number systems are predecessors to more general algebraic structures known as rings and fields. Further abstract algebraic concepts such as modules, vector spaces and algebras also form groups. Integers. <inaudible> <inaudible> The group of integers Z display style mathbound Z under addition denoted Z plus display style left mathbound Z plus right has been described above. The integers with the operation of multiplication instead of addition Z display style left mathbound Z C D O T right do not form a group. The closure, associativity and identity axioms are satisfied, but inverses do not exist, for example, a uh. 2 is an integer, but the only solution to the equation a b 1 in this case is b equals 1 half, which is a rational number, but not an integer. Hence not every element of z Display style mathbound Z has a multiplicative inverse. Topic: Rationals. 
The desire for the existence of multiplicative inverses suggests considering fractions a b display style frac a b fractions of integers with b non-zero are known as rational numbers. The set of all such irreducible fractions is commonly denoted q display style mathbound q. There is still a minor obstacle for q. Display style left math bound q c d o t right. The rationals with multiplication being a group, because the rational number zero does not have a multiplicative inverse, i.e., there is no x such that x zero equals one. Q. Display style left math bound q c d o t right is still not a group. However, the set of all non-zero rational numbers q zero equals q element of q q does not equal 0 display style math bound q set minus left 0 right equals left q in math bound q mid q any q 0 right does form an abelian group under multiplication generally denoted q display style math bound q caret asterisk Associativity and identity element axioms follow from the properties of integers. The closure requirement still holds true after removing zero, because the product of two non-zero rationals is never zero. Finally, the inverse of a b is b a, therefore the axiom of the inverse element is satisfied. The rational numbers including zero also form a group under addition. Intertwining addition and multiplication operations yields more complicated structures called rings and if division is possible, such as in Q mathbound Q fields, which occupy a central position in abstract algebra. Group theoretic arguments therefore underlie parts of the theory of those entities. Topic: <laughs> Modular arithmetic. In modular arithmetic, two integers are added and then the sum is divided by a positive integer called the modulus. The result of modular addition is the remainder of that division. For any modulus, n, the set of integers from 0 to n minus 1 forms a group under modular addition, the inverse of any element a is n minus a, and 0 is the identity element. This is familiar from the addition of hours on the face of a clock, if the hour hand is on 9 and is advanced 4 hours, it ends up on 1, as shown at the right. This is expressed by saying that 9 plus 4 equals 1, modulo 12, or, in symbols, 9 plus 4 1 modulo 12, the group of integers modulo n is written z n display style math bound z underscore n or Z n Z display style math bound Z n math bound Z. For any prime number p, there is also the multiplicative group of integers modulo p. Its elements are the integers one to p minus one. The group operation is multiplication modulo p. That is, the usual product is divided by p, and the remainder of this division is the result of modular multiplication. For example, if p Topic five. There are four group elements one, two, three, four. In this group, four, four. One, because the usual product sixteen is equivalent to one, which divided by five yields a remainder of one. For five divides sixteen minus one equals fifteen, denoted sixteen one mod five. The primality of p ensures that the product of two integers, neither of which is divisible by p, is not divisible by p either. Hence, the indicated set of classes is closed under multiplication. The identity element is one, as usual for a multiplicative group, and the associativity follows from the corresponding property of integers. Finally, the inverse element axiom requires that, given an integer are not divisible by p, there exists an integer b such that a b one mod p, i.e. p divides the difference a b minus one. The inverse b can be found by using Bezout's identity and the fact that the greatest common divisor g c d a p equals one. In the case p, 
Topic: Five above, the inverse of four is four, and the inverse of three is two, as three two. Six one mod five. Hence, all group axioms are fulfilled. Actually, this example is similar to q zero. Display style left math bound q set minus left zero right c d o t right. Above, it consists of exactly those elements in Z P Z Display style math bound Z P math bound Z that have a multiplicative inverse. These groups are denoted FP times. They are crucial to public key cryptography. Topic: Cyclic groups. A cyclic group is a group all of whose elements are powers of a particular element A. In multiplicative notation, the elements of the group are a minus three, a minus two, a minus one, a zero. Topic e a a two a three, where a two means a a, and a minus three stands for a minus one, a minus one, a minus one. A a a minus one, etc. Such an element a is called a generator or a primitive element of the group. In additive notation, the requirement for an element to be primitive is that each element of the group can be written as minus a minus a minus a zero a a plus a. In the groups Z and Z introduced above, the element one is primitive, so these groups are cyclic. Indeed, each element is expressible as a sum all of whose terms are one. Any cyclic group with n elements is isomorphic to this group. A second example for cyclic groups is the group of nth complex roots of unity, given by complex numbers z satisfying zinc. Topic <laughs> one. These numbers can be visualized as the vertices on a regular n-gon, as shown in blue at the right for n. Six. The group operation is multiplication of complex numbers. In the picture, multiplying with Z corresponds to a counter-clockwise rotation by 60 degrees. Using some field theory, the group FP times can be shown to be cyclic, for example, if P topic 5, 3 is a generator since 31 3, 32 equals 9 4, 33 2, and 34 1. Some cyclic groups have an infinite number of elements. In these groups, for every non-zero element A, all the powers of A are distinct, despite the name, cyclic group. The powers of the elements do not cycle. An infinite cyclic group is isomorphic to Z plus the group of integers under addition introduced above. As these two prototypes are both abelian, so is any cyclic group. The study of finitely generated abelian groups is quite mature, including the fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups, and reflecting this state of affairs, many group-related notions, such as center and commutator, describe the extent to which a given group is not abelian. Symmetry groups Symmetry groups are groups consisting of symmetries of given mathematical objects be they of geometric nature, such as the introductory symmetry group of the square, or of algebraic nature, such as polynomial equations and their solutions. Conceptually, group theory can be thought of as the study of symmetry. Symmetries in mathematics greatly simplify the study of geometrical or analytical objects. A group is said to act on another mathematical object X if every group element performs some operation on X compatibly to the group law. In the rightmost example below, an element of order 7 of the 2, 3, 7 triangle group acts on the tiling by permuting the highlighted warped triangles and the other ones, too. By a group action, the group pattern is connected to the structure of the object being acted on. In chemical fields, such as crystallography, space groups and point groups describe molecular symmetries and crystal symmetries. These symmetries underlie the chemical and physical behavior of these systems, and group theory enables simplification of quantum mechanical analysis of these properties. 
For example, group theory is used to show that optical transitions between certain quantum levels cannot occur simply because of the symmetry of the states involved. Not only are groups useful to assess the implications of symmetries in molecules, but surprisingly they also predict that molecules sometimes can change symmetry. The yarn teller effect is a distortion of a molecule of high symmetry when it adopts a particular ground state of lower symmetry from a set of possible ground states that are related to each other by the symmetry operations of the molecule. Likewise, group theory helps predict the changes in physical properties that occur when a material undergoes a phase transition, for example, from a cubic to a tetrahedral crystalline form. An example is ferroelectric materials, where the change from a paraelectric to a ferroelectric state occurs at the Curie temperature and is related to a change from the high symmetry paraelectric state to the lower symmetry ferroelectric state, accompanied by a so called soft phonon mode, a vibrational lattice mode that goes to zero frequency at the transition. Such spontaneous symmetry breaking has found further application in elementary particle physics, where its occurrence is related to the appearance of Goldstone bosons. Finite symmetry groups such as the Mathieu groups are used in coding theory, which is in turn applied in error correction of transmitted data, and in CD players. Another application is differential Galois theory, which characterizes functions having antiderivatives of a prescribed form, giving group theoretic criteria for when solutions of certain differential equations are well behaved. Geometric properties that remain stable under group actions are investigated in geometric invariant theory. General linear group and representation theory Matrix groups consist of matrices together with matrix multiplication. The general linear group GL N R consists of all invertible n by n matrices with real entries. Its subgroups are referred to as matrix groups or linear groups. The dihedral group example mentioned above can be viewed as a very small matrix group. Another important matrix group is the special orthogonal group so n. It describes all possible rotations in n dimensions. Via Euler angles, rotation matrices are used in computer graphics. Representation theory is both an application of the group concept and important for a deeper understanding of groups. It studies the group by its group actions on other spaces. A broad class of group representations are linear representations, i.e., the group is acting on a vector space, such as the three-dimensional Euclidean space R3. A representation of G on an n-dimensional real vector space is simply a group homomorphism. Rho G G L N R from the group to the general linear group. This way, the group operation, which may be abstractly given, translates to the multiplication of matrices making it accessible to explicit computations, given a group action, this gives further means to study the object being acted on. On the other hand, it also yields information about the group. Group representations are an organizing principle in the theory of finite groups, Lie groups, algebraic groups and topological groups, especially locally compact groups. Topic. Galois groups Galois groups were developed to help solve polynomial equations by capturing their symmetry features. For example, the solutions of the quadratic equation ax 2 plus bx plus c equals 0 are given by x equals minus b plus or minus b 2 minus for a c to a display style x equals frac b pm sqrt b caret 2 minus 4 ac 2 a exchanging plus and minus in the expression ie permuting the two solutions of the equation can be viewed as a very simple group operation Similar formulae are known for cubic and quartic equations, but do not exist in general for degree 5 and higher. Abstract properties of Galois groups associated with polynomials in particular their solvability give a criterion for polynomials that have all their solutions expressible by radicals, i.e., solutions expressible using Soli addition, multiplication, and roots similar to the formula above. The problem can be dealt with by shifting to field theory and considering the splitting field of a polynomial. Modern Galois theory generalizes the above type of Galois groups to field extensions and establishes 
via the fundamental theorem of Galois theory a precise relationship between fields and groups, underlining once again the ubiquity of groups in mathematics. <laughs> Finite groups A group is called finite if it has a finite number of elements. The number of elements is called the order of the group. An important class is the symmetric groups Sn, the groups of permutations of n letters. For example, the symmetric group on three letters S3 is the group consisting of all possible orderings of the three letters ABC, i.e., contains the elements ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA, CAB, CBA, in total six factorial of three elements. This class is fundamental insofar as any finite group can be expressed as a subgroup of a symmetric group Sn for a suitable integer n, according to Cayley's theorem. Parallel to the group of symmetries of the square above, S3 can also be interpreted as the group of symmetries of an equilateral triangle. The order of an element A in a group G is the least positive integer n such that an equals E, where n represents A A n Factors display style under brace a c d o t s a underscore n text factors, i.e. application of the operation to n copies of a. If represents multiplication, then n corresponds to the nth power of a. In infinite groups, such an n may not exist, in which case the order of a is said to be infinity. The order of an element equals the order of the cyclic subgroup generated by this element. More sophisticated counting techniques, for example counting cosets yield more precise statements about finite groups. Lagrange's theorem states that for a finite group G the order of any finite subgroup H divides the order of G. The silo theorems give a partial converse. The dihedral group, discussed above, is a finite group of order 8. The order of R1 is 4, as is the order of the subgroup R it generates see above. The order of the reflection elements Fv etc. is 2. Both orders divide 8, as predicted by Lagrange's theorem. The groups Fp times above have order P1. Topic: <laughs> Classification of finite simple groups Mathematicians often strive for a complete classification or list of a mathematical notion. In the context of finite groups, this aim leads to difficult mathematics. According to Lagrange's theorem, finite groups of order p, a prime number, are necessarily cyclic abelian groups Zp. Groups of order p2 can also be shown to be abelian, a statement which does not generalize to order p3, as the non-abelian group d4 of order 8. Equals 23 above shows. Computer algebra systems can be used to list small groups, but there is no classification of all finite groups. An intermediate step is the classification of finite simple groups. A non-trivial group is called simple if its only normal subgroups are the trivial group and the group itself. The Jordan-Holder theorem exhibits finite simple groups as the building blocks for all finite groups. Listing all finite simple groups was a major achievement in contemporary group theory. 1998 Fields Medal winner Richard Borchard succeeded in proving the monstrous moonshine conjectures, a surprising and deep relation between the largest finite simple sporadic group the monster group and certain modular functions, a piece of classical complex analysis, and string theory, a theory supposed to unify the description of many physical phenomena. <laughs> Groups with additional structure equals Many groups are simultaneously groups and examples of other mathematical structures. In the language of category theory, they are group objects in a category, meaning that they are objects, that is, examples of another mathematical structure, which come with transformations called morphisms that mimic the group axioms. For example, every group as defined above is also a set, so a group is a group object in the category of sets. equals <laughs> topic topological groups equals some topological spaces may be endowed with a group law. 
In order for the group law and the topology to interweave well, the group operations must be continuous functions, that is, g h, and g1 must not vary wildly if g and h vary only little. Such groups are called topological groups, and they are the group objects in the category of topological spaces. The most basic examples are the reals R under addition, R, 0, and similarly with any other topological field such as the complex numbers or p-adic numbers. All of these groups are locally compact, so they have Haar measures and can be studied by a harmonic analysis. The former offer an abstract formalism of invariant integrals. Invariance means, in the case of real numbers for example R F X D X equals R F X plus C D X display style int underscore math bound R F X D X equals int underscore math bound R F X plus C D X for any constant C. Matrix groups over these fields fall under this regime, as the Adele rings and Adelic algebraic groups, which are basic to number theory. Galois groups of infinite field extensions such as the absolute Galois group can also be equipped with a topology, the so-called Kroll topology, which in turn is central to generalize the above-sketched connection of fields and groups to infinite field extensions. An advanced generalization of this idea, adapted to the needs of algebraic geometry, is the Etale fundamental group. Topic. Lie groups Lie groups in honor of Sophus Lie are groups which also have a manifold structure, i.e., they are spaces looking locally like some Euclidean space of the appropriate dimension. Again, the additional structure, here the manifold structure, has to be compatible, i.e., the maps corresponding to multiplication and the inverse have to be smooth. A standard example is the general linear group introduced above, it is an open subset of the space of all n by n matrices, because it is given by the inequality det a does not equal zero, where it denotes an n by n matrix. Lie groups are of fundamental importance in modern physics. Noether's theorem links continuous symmetries to conserved quantities. Rotation, as well as translations in space and time, are basic symmetries of the laws of mechanics. They can, for instance, be used to construct simple models imposing, say, axial symmetry on a situation will typically lead to significant simplification in the equations one needs to solve to provide a physical description. Another example are the Lorentz transformations, which relate measurements of time and velocity of two observers in motion relative to each other. They can be deduced in a purely group theoretical way, by expressing the transformations as a rotational symmetry of Minkowski space. The latter serves, in the absence of significant gravitation, as a model of space-time in special relativity. The full symmetry group of Minkowski space, i.e., including translations, is known as the Poincaré group. By the above, it plays a pivotal role in special relativity and, by implication, for quantum field theories. Symmetries that vary with location are central to the modern description of physical interactions with the help of gauge theory. Topic. Generalizations In abstract algebra, more general structures are defined by relaxing some of the axioms defining a group. For example, if the requirement that every element has an inverse is eliminated, the resulting algebraic structure is called a monoid. The natural numbers n including zero under addition form a monoid, as do the non-zero integers under multiplication z zero, see above. There is a general method to formally add inverses to elements to any abelian monoid, much the same way as Q0 is derived from Z0, known as the Grothendieck group. Groupoids are similar to groups except that the composition AB need not be defined for all A and B. They arise in the study of more complicated forms of symmetry, often in topological and analytical structures, such as the fundamental groupoid or stacks. Finally, it is possible to generalize any of these concepts by replacing the binary operation with an arbitrary nary1, i.e., an operation taking n arguments. With the proper generalization of the group axioms, this gives rise to an nary group. The table gives a list of several structures generalizing groups. 
Topic See also List of group theory topics Topic Notes equals equals citations <laughs>